Welcome back to React Native Radio Podcast. Brought to you by the Dung Beetle, who reminds you, are you feeling down about your own life? Just remember, you could be a Dung Beetle. Episode 236, Reanimated 2 and Beyond with Christoph Magira. Mazen, it's been, uh, I don't know, how old is your son now? A uh, few weeks, maybe a few couple months. Eight weeks today. Eight weeks. Okay. That's where you're kind of transitioning from how many weeks old to how many months old. Exactly. Yeah. So two months. How's life been? Good. Uh, I mean, at first we weren't sleeping much, but I can say, you know, hopefully this, he doesn't hear me say this, but the last three days he's been sleeping longer stretches and it feels better to be getting more than three hours of sleep at night. <laughs> Turns out sleep's important, uh, especially when you're dealing with the stress of a, of a new little one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But all in all, very rewarding kind of, you know, getting to hang out with him, yeah, hear him, like seeing him grow. After every nap, it feels like he's one year older. It's crazy. <laughs> it's true. You know, it, I've said this many times before, maybe, I, maybe on this podcast, I don't remember, but uh, when I look back at videos of my kids, you know, and my first one was born in 2005, so he's 17 now. And my youngest is eight. But I look back at videos when they were young and I see their personality like now back then. So like Ooh. I see this little kid who is just a little kid, like a very tiny kid who's acting like Cedric, you know, like yeah. you can see his his personality coming out uh, and my daughter's as well. It's really, really fascinating because you get to know them later, like like you're going to get to know your son a lot better later. And you're going to go back and you're going to know him better looking at those videos and understand him better why he was acting the way he is. You totally. know, it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. It's exciting and rewarding at the same time. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been in that place. Uh, it, now we're in a different, different mode of life with the little bit older, older kids. But <laughs> this is kind of fun. Uh, we have a guest today. Uh, so, of course, I am joined by my ingenious co-host Mazen. I'm pulling out that one. I like that word. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Robin is not here. She's uh, actually her daughter has has a cold, so she's taking care of her. But today we also have a guest and his name is Christoph Magira. Now, I know that's not how you pronounce it in Polish, but you're saying you, you told me before the show that to your, your English speaking friends, that's how you say it, right? Yeah, that's correct. Hello, everyone. Nice to have you on here. And of course, I'm Jamin Holmgren, your host, friendly CTO of Infinite Red. I'm doing all the introductions backwards today, um, but that's okay. <laughs> that kind of day. It is. It is kind of that kind of that kind of day. Uh, just to go back to Mazen, he lives in Durham, North Carolina. Former pro soccer player and coach, senior React Native engineer, works at Infinite Red. And uh, Christoph, you are a you're a co-founder uh, of Software Mansion. Software Mansion, of course, a big player in the React Native world. We've been aware of you folks for a long time. You're also ex React Native Core at Facebook. Uh, you are an author of some really, really important packages in this in this whole ecosystem. So you've done a lot of open source. Now you're from Poland. Do you still live in Poland? Yeah, yeah. We're based in Poland. I'm based in Poland, and the company is also based in Krakow, Poland. So there's a lot of React Native talent over there in Poland. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> What isn't in in the bio, Christoph? Do you have any hobbies? Do you you know like what 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 have we not talked about for the past couple of years? My hobbies are mainly uh, it's my son basically still taking care of uh, him and and soon he'll be joined by a brother. So that's gonna be the two. That's awesome! Congratulations! Thanks. So at, outside of that, yeah, I mean I've been. Uh, really involved in uh, like the grow, growing the company for the past couple of years, and mm -hmm. and also building those open source libraries. So uh, so my my interests are mainly in, in that area. But I've been also doing um, some teaching, for example, as um, I'm actually uh, teaching on uh, on the university. Um, have a I have a PhD in computer science. Uh, that's something that uh, a lot of people don't really know about me. Um, and, and before mm -hmm. that, I, I used to play, I mean, I play violin for like 12 years. So, uh, so still continue to do that on 
some you know family occasions, but no longer and mm-hmm. mm, not, not not that often as I, I'd like to. That's really cool. Our project manager Jed Bartoski also plays violin. He's fantastic at it. Um, but yeah, he doesn't break it out all that often <laughs> for us. <laughs> he should. Uh, but it, it's pretty cool. Mazen, do you play any mu- musical instruments? No, but if you were to dig through the archives, I used to play a trombone in high school. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. I I played uh, baritone in okay. not in high school, in middle school, and I didn't didn't continue that on. But I guess yeah, we were both in the low brass section <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, I did play trumpet a little bit, and I played some bass guitar, um, a few other things, but. All of the musical talent went to my brothers and sisters and not to me. So I, I stick to computers. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, this episode is sponsored by Infinite Red, premier React Native design and development agency located fully remote in the US and Canada. Hit us up if you're looking for React Native help, infinite.red slash React Native. Don't forget to mention that you heard about us through the React Native radio podcast. We also are hiring. Go to careers.infinite.red. Also, there's a new thing. Um, we're going to ask the audience here, audience, you, you all have some homework. We want to know what weird bugs in React Native that you've run into, like any, any weird bug at all, like doing a React Native project. And then we're going to do a whole episode on weird bugs that we've found that, you know, the, the audience has given or anything like that. So tag us on Twitter with hashtag weird bug and at React Native RDIO. And we'll take a look. So if you if you tag React Native Radio and you hashtag weird bug, we're going to find you. And then we'll feature you on a future episode. Talk about the weird bug that you had. Give us some information, some good story around it. And then we'll share that with the audience. Uh, that's kind of a fun one. I'm going to probably tease that a few more times. Uh, but if you have any weird bugs, please let us know about it. Christoph, you too. Yes, we want to hear your weird bugs too. If you've got any weird bugs you've run into, I'm sure you have plenty. Yeah, I, I, I've had so many. Yeah, yeah, I have plenty. <laughs> All right, let's get into our topic for today. So we have Christoph here to talk about Reanimated Two, which has been out for two years, two years almost. Yeah, I think the uh, we initially announced it in May 2020, but it was like an early beta, and then it kind of hit. A R C around I think September that year. It was a big deal because it was a pretty big change from the original reanimated, and it brought in some really amazing new features. Uh, that I mean, I I honestly couldn't be more impressed with with this library. I'm really happy to have you on here to talk about it. So there was a blog post uh, introducing reanimated two, uh, posted on the Software Mansion blog, and uh, we'll link to that in the show notes so people can see what that was all about. First off, can you tell me a little bit, you're a co-founder, what's the story of Software Mansion? Uh, you know, what's, the, what's its history, the role in the React Native community, and, you know, just kind of talk about that if you could. Um, sure. So, so we founded Software Mansion in 2012, so we're almost 10 years old already. Um, and oh, wow. Yeah we, yeah, we started like with just a group of friends who like graduated college and, and we had some experiences working with like big companies. Um, but I wanted to, you know, build something on, on our own and we, we like, we're looking for like some ideas and eventually started like a sort of like a startup that was a mobile app, um, uh, basically that we, we built within a couple of months and then I like, tried to, um, to get to the market and then start, you know, getting some customers in and, and then users in. And it turns out that that part was more difficult for us because we were coming from like a computer science background. And uh, when, when like building things were kind of easy for us, whereas like selling them and figuring out how we find users and how to find interest on the market was much more difficult. But we enjoyed working together. And we, we built like a team of five, I think four or five people. So we, we decided that we want to actually like start selling services and start selling the, and the expertise that we, we got um of, of building software um so we're we're a lot of into mobile development at the time and web development um specifically in, in rails and and eventually in 2013 when react came out we we picked that up really it was it was because i was actually on the internship with facebook uh it was like 2012 2013 i think um in the meantime while while the company already existed and and i brought react 
from from there uh, it was like yeah i think 2013 when when it first came out as like an open source project and and i, I was really like, excited about it and we found the um the the, the new paradigms uh, that react introduced was very really interesting and very really good way of building um the building interfaces so we started using that pretty early and and while while i also had a experience working on um on mobile um that kind of it became sort of natural that that building magnetic was something that i was really well equipped to to do and once i actually joined facebook full-time uh it was 2014 or 15 i don't really remember uh, where the the initial React Native core team was formed, uh, I joined the team. It was like I think five or six people, maybe at Facebook, uh, working on that. And mm-hmm. React Native was uh, then there was like one internal lab built uh, for for iOS, and I started on on the Android uh, part of of the framework, and eventually open sourced it and come came back to uh, to to Poland eventually after uh, two years. Um, rejoined the company and uh, and yeah, we we at that time were around twenty people I think uh, had a bunch of different clients and started using the framework. But we not only started using it for our clients, but we also like because because of of my knowledge and experience experience in React Native, we we know what are the weak points, what is missing from the framework, and started working together with with Expo on on improving those those things that are. Missing so so the first thing that we built was the the animated uh, native driver support. Mm-hmm. So this is something that I actually built, like like the original what was uh, included in the React Native yeah, core. Yeah, the, the one that was the, yeah, the animated, animated API was a part of the the React core, and then also the mm-hmm. the native driver was something that that had been built while I was already outside of Facebook. It was it was kind of like oh, an okay. outside contribution okay. to the core. Um, and it enabled, uh, you know, running the animated API on the UI thread. Um, so that was the, the initial, like one of the first contribution that we did as software mentioned. And then like, and then it, we started like kind of going with our own projects or our own ideas to, to improve the, the things that are missing or things that just don't really perform very well, uh, in course. So we, we created a gesture handler library, then reanimated it. First version of it, mm-hmm. and then React Native screens eventually. Which, by the way, I'm a big fan of React Native screens. Which sounds really weird because it's like this kind of thing that is in the background. You wouldn't think people would be a fan of it, but <laughs> we won't talk about that right now. But I, I do. I am a big fan of it. I think it's awesome. Yeah, th- that, that's really great. Uh, it's it's a cool it's a cool story or origin story. Yeah, like the the goal the goal for us for the whole time was uh, basically to to improve the framework. So we see this as. It's opportunity mm-hmm. for us to grow because then, like we can, uh, we, we can work uh, like by by making React Native better. It's actually better for our clients, but it's also better for our um, engineers that we we uh, we employ here, uh, who have invested their time in you know learning the the framework. So by making it better, by by having like a real impact on on how good the framework is, we we actually make it better for for everyone. So that's kind of a win win for present that's the main sort of main main goal and main uh, idea behind us and in investing in open source and, and building all those things absolutely those are some hard-hitting libraries that i think everybody in react native uses or doesn't realize they're using underneath <laughs> the hood. so yeah i mean i feel like i've been using gesture handler forever i don't remember a time mm-hmm. when i never had it in my library that's <laughs> awesome pivoting to you know focusing on reanimated too if you were to give an elevator pitch, so you know, if user was only to listen to this little segment, what's the biggest difference between re- reanimated one and coming into reanimated two? Sure. Um, so re- reanimated in general is a library that enables you to um, build like a rich animations and interactions in React Native. And when you compare reanimated one to reanimated two, the way I like to think about this is that reanimated one, uh, I see it as like a assembly language for animation so this is something that is very low level and kind of difficult to um to use and has like a lot of traps for you to fall into whereas reanimated 2 is a javascript for animations because it it really is and it will see to write javascript doing do the same stuff but on a higher level of abstraction 
so that's that that will be the the elevator pitch for uh for the version two yeah that that's awesome i absolutely in your blog blog announcement you say and i quote here we, we weren't satisfied with the state of the art solution in this space including the libraries that were created and maintained at software mansion what libraries were you referring to and what did you see as their limitations yeah, so so basically the things that I mentioned earlier. So the the animated API, like specifically native drivers, support for it, and uh, and also the animated version one, where the libraries that we created just weren't satisfied of of, of um, how people use it or how how they they were uh, built or designed. And like one of the reasons we actually created the animated first version of it was uh, was a in order to build. Pretty basic interactions where, um, where so what what you often do when you do like an interaction interactive things because like when you when when talking about animations you uh, you may think of animations that you just fire and forget and those are kind of easy ones and uh, that you just like tell hey animate to this point and then you just like don't really care about it, that animations uh, whether it completes or like maybe the elements are gone after after whatever happens. And the second one is interactive animation. So when you when you drag something on the screen and you actually interact with it with, with a touch or with a gyroscope or or with by scrolling. So so those type of interactions are a little bit more tricky. And with animated API it was possible to actually hook the gesture handler to animate it and have like a dragging effect. So we could actually drag something and just and and all that all of those operations would be performed on the UI thread. But what the problem was that you could not really handle the, the, the final stage of the gesture using the native driver. So whenever, whenever you had like a continuous gesture of dragging the, the, the thing that you have on the screen, that's fine. You could animate that easily. But then when you lift the finger up, then you might actually want this effect to continue maybe. Um, maybe the, I don't know, you were dragging an element, you want to, what you wanted to snap to some point or something like that. So, so that, that part actually required a run through to JavaScript in order to get an information like what should happen. So you actually transition in between this interactive gesture and this non-interactive gesture. So you have an interactive one. And then after, after it's, it's finished, after you flip the finger up, you want this far and forget animation to snap to some point and, Actually, also transfer the velocity maybe of the gesture and stuff like that. Um, so that just wasn't possible with when we animated, and, and that, that was kind of the, uh, the the main reason why we why we designed we animated to to make it more advanced. We had to int introduce like some sort of like a conditional language that would actually have some sort of condition, so we could have like a if statement and then say that if you have if the gesture is active, then just follow the finger, and if it's over than like, perform some other stuff. So that, that, that was, that was the, the main reason and kind of limitation of the animated API, uh, as we perceive it. And then, uh, as for the reanimated one, uh, comparing version two with, with one that we also created and we're satisfied with that. So basically, uh, version one was kind of designed, um, by us thinking of, Hey, we want to have some basic building blocks to build those type of interactions and to make it possible to switch between those, you know, those interactive animations and then non-interactive animations and stuff like that. So we want to build like a basic building blocks and then wanted community to come up with some higher level APIs for this. So maybe build like a, uh, bottom shit component and, and use reanimated under the hood. Uh, we, we weren't really expecting like people. Uh, app, app, application developers to actually interface with reanimated at all. Like we were expecting that they would always use some sort of like an intermediate layer of components. That's really interesting. I, I, I didn't know that and I wouldn't have expected that, but that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. But, but the re reality turns out to be different. So, so a lot of developers actually ended up <laughs> using reanimated and, and it was, it was really like a difficult thing for, for them to learn because it requires sort of different mindset. Uh, because reanimated one API was kind of the, 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 the way it was designed require you to actually think differently. Like maybe, you know, Lisp language, for example. So that was more similar to Lisp than to JavaScript. Um, and, and, and yeah, and, and 
when we designed it, we didn't expect that a lot of people would have to learn it. We were expecting the library developers to learn it, maybe, but not the app developers. But that actually turns out different. So, and so we decided, hey, we have this large group of people who want to use the API. So let's make it better. Um, and that was that was the goal. And and to to use like a familiar language to them. And of course, everyone who writes React Native, they know JavaScript. So that was the natural uh, choice for us to, to, to just use like a JavaScript to, to define animations. I have like three questions that are kind of rapid fire, quick ones uh, based on stuff you've said there. When you say native driver, can you explain that in simple terms? Because a lot of people listening to this are maybe not native developers. They're just, you know, they're not just, they're, devel- they're JavaScript developers, they're more front end. What is a native driver? What, how does that kind of, come in here yeah so so native driver is a option that you can enable when using animated api and what it allows you to do is uh, for your animation to uh, to run off the main javascript thread so in react native you have um to sort of distinguish threads i mean there are more actually but uh, but let's let's say that there are two I mean, one one is the ui thread which um which renders things on the screen and and it's also the one that is receiving uh, like any events that are coming to the device, um, specifically from the from the touch screen. And the JavaScript thread is taking care of your application code, so it runs React and all the, all the JavaScript application there. And when when performing animations, this is something we discovered pretty early that you don't really want to do those animations in and on JavaScript thread because it just has more important things to do than animating things and animating is it's relatively simple in terms of uh you know you you kind of can can offload that and that work to the main thread so and so animation tend to perform better on the main thread because the main thread has the the vsync loop it it, it runs every frame and the does stuff uh there so so native driver enabled that functionality in the animated API that would allow you to define the animation on the JavaScript thread, but then execute them on the main thread. They they were actually executed um, by by a main code, so we didn't really run JavaScript on the main thread uh, because of that. That it, the, the it was actually like some transformed uh, data structure that would pass over to the natives in order to allow them allow the native thread to to execute the, the animation code. It's kind of a, a DSL in some ways, um, the way that you're, you're, you're having to describe this in a way that is fairly rich. Like it, there's, it's not just like duration and easing, you know, like there's, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. But, but animated API already was doing that. So, so the animated API mm-hmm. was kind of the, the goal of the API was to, to give you like a declarative way of writing animations, much mm-hmm. like yeah. you can, like React does for the the whole UI. So React gives you a declarative way of writing right. the the UI and the interactions that you may actually do with the with the interface. So 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 the um the animated animated API was kind of similar idea, just applied to the world of animation, and that design actually allowed and enabled the the native driver thing. So. So that happened just because it, it, it was already designed, well designed and, and ready for, for this kind of things. Now, you mentioned, you know, like the interactive parts of the animation versus the non-interactive parts of the animation, specifically talking about the new architecture that's coming from uh, in coming to React Native now with 0.68 and 0.69 coming with React 18. Does this unlock some new APIs or possibilities? Is this sort of like uh, the doorway to reanimated three? Is this sort of a thing where you can maybe, maybe some things that you had to work around uh, in the past a lot more, now you can do more directly through JSI or something like that? Um, yeah, there, there are definitely um, things like that. And, um, and exactly what you mentioned, like things that we can just do easier uh, in and in reanimated specifically the, because of the fact, for example, that reanimated two is written mainly in C plus plus, so interfacing with also the core written in C plus plus eliminates some some parts that we're interfacing directly with. So the native part is C plus plus in React in Reanim- yeah, reanimated, reanimated two. Yeah, two was already it, it was I think first JSI enabled library, so it was face first like a third party code that was working oh, through that's the cool. JSI. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. And it was it was two years ago, so uh, so the the JSI was, yeah. was already there, and and we could we could actually use it. Um, 
And and because of that, we we actually can like eliminate some parts of the code that uh, we had written specifically for iOS and Android because we just interface with with the C plus plus layer that Fabric provides. Um, and we were actually now in the process of of porting Reanimated to Fabric. Um, so this is this is like a pretty mm-hmm. lengthy process, and it's taking us longer than we anticipated. Uh, but we're we're really <laughs> close to uh, to to having it it ready and in a working shape and have had already a lot of de- demos. Uh, so so stay stay tuned stay tuned for for updates from us uh, about that. It's awesome. Um, as as for as for new APIs, we haven't really like thought a lot about that uh, just yet. So one one thing I uh, I think would be um, possible with a new architecture, although this is not something that uh, that anyone has has used just yet, is a way of um, sending synchronous events to the JS. Um, so this would, I mean, yeah, it, there is some, there there's some pieces of code in in the Fabric Core that enables that. Just there is there there are no uses of that just yet. So. That's kind of like, a, I think, the, the core team secret maybe we'll uh, someday learn from them <laughs> why, uh, what, what they use it for and <laughs> if, it's, if it's actually ready to be used. Um, but but yeah. that, that kind of thing would actually allow us, in some cases, uh, to, uh, to just perform the reanimated code or the, the workloads, as we call them, um, to, to, to make them actually work in the same VM as the rest of the, the uh, the React the, the React application code, so that would eliminate the need of having like a separate VMs, and we could actually use just this one. Um, so n- not really sure about like what the consequences of that uh, could be, in also specific in terms of performance and just taking the uh, you know the time of of uh, of the the main JS VM and keeping it busy with running animations. Not sure if, if this is like a viable. Uh, option, but definitely something we would like to explore. Cool, it, that's all very fa- like great stuff. I I'm excited to see if it's reanimated three or in reanimated two how it unlocks yeah. the fabric because we already see the potential of the new architecture and how performant it is. Adding in React eighteen and you know batching and all that kind of stuff that comes with with React eighteen, and then now what you're talking about, I think you know. I've said this multiple multiple times on the podcast. React Native is becoming much, much. It's evolving day by day, and very soon, there's no no reason why you would pick Swift or Kotlin because they're better performant. Or you know, insert line here. React Native does it just as well. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you can even reveal a little bit of a secret uh, as you already asked about Reanimated Three. So we we actually have Reanimated Three for Fabric, uh, but it's it's not going to be like <laughs> nice. a groundbreaking change between the one and two. Sure. And yeah. so we 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 actually releasing it under three because we want to get rid of the Reanimated One API. Uh, so that's the, yeah. the whole point mm-hmm. because version two was actually a mix of the new API and you could still use the old API because yeah, backwards it was compatible. meant to be backwards compatible. But with uh, with the fabric port, it's actually like porting the, the whole we emitted one code. We just decided that it's not something we want to do because it's first first people no longer really use a lot of that. Uh, so so there are some yeah, yeah. there there's some use cases where it's still being used, but we want to people eventually migrate from it so we can really support it for for this long, especially that Reanimated one was like built on native Android and then on native iOS, so like it's it's a lot of code that we would have to rewrite to support Fabric and 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 that's just not something we are willing to do, especially that we don't really know how the you know the the release roadmap is going to look like for Fabric, how long it's going to take for the community to adapt it fully. Um, so so yeah, so the the plan for us is to put out reanimated three for fabric and then also still maintain reanimated two um with you know all the updates for people who cannot really port uh, up, migrate to fabric because they I, I I expect this is going to be like a process uh, for for some people and then and, and might take several months to or or maybe even years yeah. to, for people to migrate. But I'm sure this is the last time that you'll ever have to rewrite reanimated. Like this is it. No more changes <laughs> to the core. This is we're we're stopping here. 
the API is going to be stable, right? React Native Core. That's what's going to happen. Uh, we'll <laughs> we'll see. Coming out of like the architecture conversation and now to like more of the developer experience and being a developer, how do you work with designers and letting them know what's possible? Because I think Reanimated Two kind of unlocks the box to really bring a lot of animations to uh, the developer's fingertips. But in some scenarios, that's where it stops and we don't really relate to designers. So how do you relay that to designers and let them know what's possible so that we can then bring that into our app? Yeah, so so my, my take on that is that um, like like designer that I had a chance to work with are um, very creative people and, and it would be like I, I would really feel bad for limiting their uh you know imagination and ideas that they may come up with by me saying that you can't really do that so it's it's typically the pro- process from my perspective is a little bit reversed so they come up with whatever they feel like they want and then we we discuss like what what can we do here and maybe like maybe we can build that but it may really take longer than less like longer than than it's it's really worth maybe investing in building that kind of interaction um so so but but i believe we can really build anything so so yeah so so, so my take of this is we shouldn't really limit their imagination and they totally. i think our designers would love hearing that and also i what i'm hearing from you is it's a conversation though like you're you're gonna you're gonna still have that communication between you and the designers generally you can do it it's just a matter of is it worth it is it worth the amount of time yeah but take? it's it's really similar to like any kind of process of building a product because like when you're building a product it, it, it's also like you have a lot of ideas and some of them just not be worth building and because the impact of of like building certain features might not be like high enough or good enough in order to you know uh, justify the time investment in, into building those so so it's similar process cool what are your thoughts on react native skia would you say it's a direct competitor for reanimated too yeah, so we actually work uh, closely with uh, with the folks uh, behind Radio Skia, so it's really with William Camden and and, um, and and Christian. So we we actually are running a workshop together with William on the AppJS Conf. So that's something I want to promote maybe a little bit later. Mm. But we're we're organizing a conference uh, in in Krakow on eight eight to ten June uh, this year. And, and we were doing a workshop there on animations and and uh, and drawings. Uh, so this will be joint uh, mm-hmm. work by by myself and William. Mm-hmm. So we we don't really see this as a competitor. Um, so so Skia, Reactive really Skia, uh, fills a really important gap uh, of uh, you know enabling a rich like access to sort of low level two dimensional rendering engine. Um, and, and this is something you would actually use in, uh, in a lot of animations and in, 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 in a, a number of different interactions. Mm, but, but this is kind of still like works within the boundaries of, of whatever you render with Skia. So, uh, and, and Skia, React Native Skia is obviously not something you would want to use to render anything on your screen. So things like text boxes, contr- UI control screens, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the things that you can use from from the native platform platform is not something you would actually use Skia for. Um, so for the things where you use Skia, then like it, it definitely makes sense to uh, to use the the animations API from from there directly. Um, although we have some discussions and plans to uh, to actually make it more compatible. So actually, React Native Skia already has reanimated re- comp- compatibility, so we can use. Uh, you can use the, the shared values. That's how we call call those uh, those objects that you can u- use for animations in, in Reanimated. So you can use that in, in React Native Skia. Um, but also the, the API in React Native Skia is kind of it's it's really based off of or inspired by Reanimated. So it's really close, and we actually aim to make it as close as possible so that people don't really need to you know learn. Two different APIs to use one with, you know, the, the the native UI controls and then another sort of API to to use with with drawings. Mm, so that so that's that's one one direction, mm, and maybe ideal even in in the future just make it so that you can you just use reanimate it directly in first because the APIs are going to be exactly the same. They will just 
behave differently based on whether you use it for for the drawing or or when you use it for uh, some other components. So, as, as a developer, when I'm when I'm working on animations, what do you what tools would you recommend I use? when I'm trying to debug my animations that aren't really working specifically well for me. So in, in general, reanimated runs on the on the JavaScript VM. So you can you can connect to it the same way as you connect to the JS VM that runs your um your application code. So um apparently I uh, so so there were some plans of building like a flipper plugin for example. Um and I don't remember the current state of this but we we actually got that working some time ago. I'm not sure if it's even like even now when you open Flipper when it's animated, it's running. It it may actually show you like a secondary context there. You just need to flip between these two. Um. So so using that for debugging, you can also just use you know old friend console uh, for for debugging. It's it's actually synced to the main uh, the main React Native console. So whenever you you print something, it actually shows in all the places where uh, where React Native console also outputs to, so that that will be like the the native console and also the the packager uh, thing. And if you use X for that, that will actually print out on the on the output there as well. Um, so so you know same techniques because it's it's just that JavaScript. So perfect. Yeah, that's that's very good to hear. And for you know developers just to know it's pure JavaScript, nothing really crazy underneath the hood. Yeah, and and kind of uh, along the you know debugging side of things and and whatnot. What sort of, I guess, how how would you measure if your animations are impacting your overall app's performance? Is that something that that uh, that you that you do as you're building these animations? You're you're kind of paying attention to that. Yeah, I mean, typically same approach as as with like any um, any you know React code. I mean. Uh, in 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 the reanimated, you don't really have this concept of you know re-rendering trees of components, but there is still like some pieces of JavaScript code we call them worklets that run on every frame, mm, and and they actually run in in many cases then they run much more frequently than actually your your production or your your application code base because it only runs when the state changes or maybe click you click on something or maybe the the request from the internet comes back with with the data that you want to process, so that kind of stuff. Whereas uh, this animation code may actually run on every single frame um, for the for the whole duration of animation. So, um, so so measuring that uh, is so you you can use you can use similar tools uh, as as for measuring performance in in JS. So that you have you have the JavaScript profiler there. Mm, there is also in, in React Native you have that um, that performance overlay that shows you the uh, the FPS. Um, so for uh, for your JavaScript code, you you have this JS FPS, but typically when when the JS FPS drops, you don't really feel like a significant UI stutter. So because because most of the um, or all all actually the UI code is runs on the UI thread, uh, so so dropping frames in JS doesn't really uh, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, a a drop of performance for the application, um, but but the UI drops do so. So when you see UI drops, actually we made it to may result in that. So if if your JavaScript code is really complex or you have uh, you have issues with uh, with uh, you know some long running loops or I don't know uh, to too much complexity, then then it will actually hurt the UI thread and it will actually start seeing UI drops, UI frame drops, sorry. Cool. Now, I guess this is the question on all our listeners' mind right now. Should we include Reanimated 2 in Ignite? Yeah, <laughs> I, I was hoping it was already there. <laughs> I'm, so, You know, to be honest, it, it's been kind of on the verge of being in, introduced and probably will make it at some point. Stay tuned. Yeah, may, 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 maybe yes. it's already there, like through some indirect dependency, I don't know. It's seriously great navigation and it's possible. True. Yeah. It, the way that we include things into Ignite stack is like, if we're already going to be adding it in 80% of the time that we're, you know, building an app, which is true about reanimated too, then we should, we should probably be in, integrating it. And we like to do an integration where it's just set up already. When you spin up an Ignite app, you just start using it 
Like that's it. You're it's already there. You don't have to mess with it at all. And there's probably some some examples already in there. Um, so I could totally see that that landing in a future version of Ignite. We, we have a bunch of ideas to improve Ignite. We haven't put as much engineering time into it recently, but that's coming. So uh, so watch for that. I, I think it would be really good for for the users to have that included there, just because like we admitted is is one of those modules that have a non-trivial uh, installation process just because you, you actually need to also install the plugin for, for Babel. Um, so that's like one additional step uh, in addition to just doing like a NPM install of the package because normally you have the auto-linking process that links the native code and you don't really need to care about this when you install the package. But with reanimated, you actually also need to add the, the plugin. I mean, if you, if you don't add it, then, then you actually get a warning and uh, while attempting to run the app, but still, I think this one additional step is something that um, that that would otherwise be seamless for people to using it in that. Exactly. I mean, we're already doing that with uh, with some of your work. Obviously, React Native Screens is an example of this, and and some others. Uh, React React Navigation. Um, so I could totally see that landing. All right, I have one more question, and there's a lot more I want to ask you about this, but we're running out of time. What sucks about Reanimated Two? And that's that's a really good question. Um, and I think when I when I talked about the differences between Reanimated One, which had like an API that was really difficult to to learn and kind of require a mind shift for uh, for people who typically just work with a JavaScript code base, um, I think uh, the 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 biggest difficulty for for people using Reanimated Two is that like for for for, for folks or people who 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 write normally in React code or React Native in JavaScript, they don't really need to take uh, into account movie threading. Uh, and and actually Reanimate enables that. So it allows you to get your JavaScript code and run it on a separate thread. Um, so so it, this this has consequences of course if you uh, if you know if you if you are aware of this and, and know how to manage that. And then it makes things easier for you, but uh, there there are still cases where where people uh, may actually fall into uh, into some traps because they might have you know some state that they want to share. Um, so so we we try to to improve and make you know some sort of like an automatic detection of those cases uh, so that we can warn people about you know using uh, using maybe React state in in workloads because it just may get out of sync uh, if you if you perform you know updates from one thread and then read from another um so that that kind of things um th- this is still like a, a new paradigm for a lot of developers who, who typically work with JavaScript because you don't really have that kind of concepts there um and and I think I think this is the the biggest um, biggest issue and the source of of confusion or uh, problems for for people so so improving on that and yeah i hope i hope the the, the remaining things that like uh we'll be able to figure out sooner rather than later so so we're working on on reanimated three as i mentioned with with fabric and we're working on uh, shared transition support so that's also something that people requested a lot um to be able to to use and reanimated layout animations between uh, screens so that's kind of like a, going to be an integration with react native screens um so so that's that's like one of the most re- requested feature and and something that we we also hope to be able to uh, uh to fix soon well i i want to say just on behalf of obviously the us here at infinite red and also just the react native community thanks for all of your work on this stuff it is fantastic it's really really high quality you all really think things through you're very very good engineers and it shows and you help us all out so i really appreciate it thank you so much christoph and your team uh fantastic work thanks appreciate it cool Cool. So if you'd like to nerd out more about React Native, check out my Twitch stream. I have a new website now, rn.live. So go check that out. Maybe I could have Christoph on sometime to play with some of this stuff on a live stream. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, You can also join our Slack community at community.infinite.red. We have uh, actually a little over 2,000 React Native developers in there. And I know they talk about Reanimated too sometimes. So if you have questions there, go ahead. 
there's a new Twitter community, rntwitter.infinite.red, and that will direct you to a, a Twitter community, which is kind of cool. There's uh, not been like huge amounts of traffic, but every single day there's some new question or cool thing that's been posted on there. It's been a lot of fun for me. And don't forget to send us your weird React Native bugs on Twitter. We're going to be doing an episode about React Native weird bugs. So do that. Christoph, where can people find you on uh, Twitter or elsewhere? Yeah, on Twitter, um, my handle is K, then three Zs and then F. So it's K Z Z Z F. <laughs> Such an awesome handle. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's, it's basically the way people, people type my name after seeing it somewhere. <laughs> so they just see you do yeah, have they, two they just z's see there are a lot of z's and then like this they, they, yeah. they, they see the k at the s. beginning and then the yeah. f at the end and then there, yeah. there are a lot of z's in, in between <laughs> so that's that's how they they type it i love um, it i love it and uh you can find mazen at mazen chami you can find me at jamin holmgren react native radio is at react native rdio uh as always thanks to our producer and editor todd worth our assistant editor our assistant editor and episode release coordinator, Jed Bartoski, our designer, Justin Husky, and our guest coordinator, Derek Greenberg. Thanks to our sponsor, Infinite Red. Check us out, infinite.red slash React Native. A special thanks to all of you listening today. Make sure to subscribe on all the major podcasting platforms. We are React Native Radio. Reminder, we're hiring. Go to careers.infinite.red, and we will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>